Um, welcome to Carleton University and welcome to grad studies. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, very good. Yeah. I'll start liking this event even before it starts. Um, I usually start by saying that there are two moments in life when saying yes is really crucial and may change your life. One is when you get married. The other one is when you say yes to an offer of grad studies at Carlton. <laughs> so in the first case, sometimes after a few years, you find out that maybe that wasn't the right word to say in that moment. <laughs> I'm not talking out of experience, but I hear people laughing, maybe out of experience, who knows? Um, at Carlton, it's not. It was the correct word, and you will know that when you finish, okay? So, so that's how I'd like to start to welcome you to this amazing university. And it all starts with the new graduate student orientation. Uh, you found the right place. I'm not actually sure if you did, because one thing I should say before I continue is that there is another orientation for science and engineering in the afternoon at 2.15 in this very building, just downstairs. So if you belong to that group, then uh, you may listen to some of the jokes again if you like them, okay? <laughs> but you should be mainly from FPA and uh, FAS and SPROT here today. Is that true for everybody? Yeah, I see general consent. Okay, well, that's good. So. Um, this grad orientation, as I mentioned here, is brought to you by a lot of different uh, um, organizations on campus, starting with the Faculty of Graduate and Postdoctoral Affairs that I, to a degree, represent, the Graduate Student Association and QP4600, which represents the TAs and the contract instructors at this university. They all will speak to you uh, either during this presentation uh, now or in the afternoon at the TA session. So I get to this. I should start by saying who I am. My name is Matthias Neufang, and the correct pronunciation of that name is about the hardest thing you will ever face <laughs> at Carlton, right? I have colleagues who have taken like 15 years to still mispronounce it, so the <laughs> level of, of, uh, of uh, uh, kind of uh, ideas how to uh, torture this name uh, uh, seem to be endless. Um, I'm um, what is called your host, that means you have to put up with me for about an hour. Um, it seems to work quite well so far, so let's see. Um, I kind of wear two hats, okay? Uh, one is uh, I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Graduate and Postdoctoral Affairs, that is also known as FGPA, okay? It could be also the, the Faculty of Great Professional Achievement, if you actually do very well, which I'm sure you will. We oversee all graduate programs at Carlton. There are over 100 of these. We uh, help to develop even new ones, even though we have already many. Uh, we provide funding to all our grad students, such as you. Uh, we keep you up to date on news at grad studies of any sort, and you will hear a lot about what that means from the various people that will speak in a few minutes. But what I would like to do is also to share some of my own experiences as a professor here for almost 15 years now, in the School of Mathematics and Statistics. I'm what is called a pure mathematician. That means I like to think about things that are maybe not immediately useful now, but they are just, uh, but we, we convince people they may be. And uh, we try to think, and we meaning mainly my colleagues in this area, myself, and also with my grad students, of course, and this is why I want to talk about this a little bit, to think about problems in my area about pure mathematics. Now, you may not find that overly thrilling, but I do, and, and, and they do, and uh, we are trying to seek beauty in this area. This is really what it is, okay? Led by beauty and by discovery and seeking the truth, if there is such a thing. And I don't mean that we think about whether there is beauty, we know that, but we just want to discover more of it, okay? So that's kind of the idea, and for me, this is really an exact art. This is what mathematics is, and I won't go much into this, but only to the degree that it speaks about research in general, because it's really an adventure you are embarking on, and I mean this in the true sense of it, because nobody really knows in an adventure where the path is going. If there was a clear path, then it wouldn't be very interesting. And that's a huge difference to undergraduate studies, where hopefully your professors always knew more or less the answer. At the graduate level, they don't, and they shouldn't, because nobody does. You are embarking into a, a field where, at your master's, in your PhD especially, you do new cutting-edge research. 
And that means discovering new areas, finding out new things people did not know before, clarifying things that were not clear before, and this is unknown territory. Your supervisor doesn't know exactly because no one knows, okay? So there's a beautiful saying from Picasso who said, if I would know exactly how to do something, why would I even start with it? <laughs> and what he meant by this is, of course, it's not really interesting if I know exactly how to do it. And that's a huge difference between undergraduate and graduate studies and embarking in new research and um, exploring uh, totally new territory. Now, what I should also say is that you are not alone in this. You have your supervisor with you all the time. And you also, if you look around, you have a lot of other graduate students with you in that adventure. And what is really great and what drove myself to grad studies is that what I love most about being a prof is actually to work with my grad students because they all became good friends during the time that we worked together on really hard problems, discovering new things that nobody had explored before. And why does that actually create a great relationship and, and makes you good friends? And I'm not talking about myself only. All my colleagues do a terrific job. I just got about a week ago the a new survey of how our grad students like to work with faculty members here, how they like their grad programs, and we are now in all the major questions ahead of the rest of the province, okay? Which is certainly great results. They are not public yet, but I got them first off the oven, and, and they, they really look great to me. Yes. Well, I should say I'm German, okay? So I may use metaphors to which you are not used, you know? But that's just part of your adaptation to this campus, okay? Um, there's a great saying of another person that, that, that was a great mathematician, he died a few years ago, Paul Erdős, and he said, a theorem, and that's what we spend our life on, worthy of attack proves its worth by fighting back. And that means that if you want to get somewhere, then you have to work hard on it. But as I said, this kind of adventure, you are not alone, you're with your supervisor, and that creates a bond because you are fighting together. And having a common enemy, that means the unknown to discovering something or to proving a theorem that just doesn't want to be correct yet, really creates an amazing bond. So that's something very precious. And I have great relationships with all my, my, my former grad students. Uh, one of them actually just starts here this fall as a professor. So he returns after a postdoc in Waterloo, returns back here as a prof. So it's just great to see your family grow this way. And you are becoming part of this big family that is Carlton. So uh, welcome on campus and welcome to your graduate program that is one of about 100. And as I said at the beginning, we have, I mean, lots of different programs across five different faculties, in three of which you are. As I mentioned, science and engineering is this afternoon. We have programs reaching from uh, graduate diplomas to master's programs to PhDs. But as some people who even aspire to be the next president of the US say, I won't bore you with facts. So I will instead, <laughs> after telling you a bit about my own experience and why I think grad studies is really exciting, I now invite a series of speakers that tell you from their perspective why they think grad studies is, is great and tell you about the rich spectrum of things that Carlton has to offer. Now, before I do this, I learned that nowadays people communicate by uh, tweeting to each other and following each other on Facebook and, and, and so on. And Lynn is my specialist on this. She uh, taught me a lot about these things and uh, she will tell you also how to, um, how to use this. So there are a lot of news that, that are tweeted out on a regular basis and you can also, if you find this event cool, as I hope you will, you can also tweet your friends about this, okay? <laughs> By using these hashtags that you see here. Now, who's our first speaker? Uh, it's uh, Debbie Owusu Achia, and I trained two days to get that right, and it was correctly pronounced. You don't have a chance to correct it now anyhow. <laughs> I, I can still keep going for about 30 seconds, okay? So she's... Uh, um, the president of the, uh, the Grad Student Association, and she will tell you about all the different uh, services and, uh, and, and great activities that the, the GSA does in their role on campus. Then we have uh, FGPA's uh, very own and only David Lafferty, who is the coordinator of graduate professional <laughs> development. 
and he will tell you about why you should be interested in, uh, in professional development and all the resources that uh, Carlton offers. And also, I would like to, uh, to thank him and, and Lynn, our communications officer, who will tell you about tweeting, about Facebook, all these strange things you've never heard about, and what Carlton actually does with it and how Grad Studies uh, uses it to communicate with you and how you can stay informed uh, with our electronic newsletter and other things, funding opportunities, deadlines, awards, and so on. But I'd like to thank particularly uh, David and, and Lynn for helping to organize this event, bring you all here, and convince me to uh, come to stage. So thank you. and. Um, then we have a guest speaker that we are very happy that she uh, took the time to tell you a bit about uh, the academic perspective uh, from graduate studies. That's Dr. Carol Payne, who is an associate prof in art history. So she relates certainly to the Shirk disciplines extremely well, better than mathematics perhaps. So <laughs> we, we, we let her speak about this. And we are very grateful that she took the time to speak to you. And at the end, if you have questions, then we may have answers, depending on what the question is. <laughs> now, what I should also say by, term in, by, by ways of uh, logistics, there is a new TA orientation as well for the faculties of Public Affairs, Arts and Social Sciences, and SPROT um, in this very location here at 2.15, from 2.15 to 3.15. What I should also mention, maybe not at the same time, is that there's a barbecue coming as well that starts just heating up the sausages at 2.30, okay? But there will still be enough left until 5.30, okay? So don't skip the TA session just because of the food. We will keep it there. Trust me, I'm German enough to know sausages are not something that, that, uh, that can be taken lightly. So we actually make sure we have enough food for everybody. Now, let me start with Debbie here, uh, the president of the GSA. Thanks. So I was a little bit nervous at first, but I'm not anymore. This is good. OK. Well, hello, new graduate students. Welcome to the new 2016-2017 school year. My name is Debbie Owusuacha. I use she, her pronouns. And I am your Graduate Student Association president. Before I continue, I'd like to take uh, some time to acknowledge the land that Carleton University is on uh, and the land that we continue to exist and survive on. We are currently in unceded and unsurrendered Algonquin territory. So what that means is that the land that we are on was never given away through treaty. I'd also like to thank our interpreters for being here and uh, signing for the folks who are needing extra accessibility. Uh, it just shows new students a little bit about where Carleton is in trying to be accessible. So thank you so much for being here. I also want to take time to thank the other people that we often forget. I want to thank the workers that after events and at the end of the day, clean and maintain spaces like this on campus. This is the work that is often held by feminine, racialized, underpaid, and often underappreciated folk. They may or may not be here, but either way, we give them thanks. So just like you, I am a first year grad student. I am starting my master's at the Norman Patterson School of International Affairs, <laughs> AKA NIFSIA. <laughs> uh, it's pretty cool to be a first year grad student and have the privilege to do things like this. This means that people who, the people who represent you are also going through all the new emotions, mostly excitement, of starting uh, a new school and or the new chapter of our academic journey. Uh, the GSA is here to help with making your journey, your journey throughout grad studies as enjoyable as possible. The GSA is a member-driven advocacy and service organization for about 3,900 graduate students. Our offices are located on the sixth floor of the University Center, and we're also local 78 of the Canadian Federation of Students. The first part of what we do is on the advocacy side. So that includes complaints of discrimination, administrative issues, issues regarding grades, et cetera. William Philipchuk, our VP academic, has worked to uh, formalize drop-in hours for students to come speak to him about any issues regarding their academics. We also have campaigns centered on addressing the drastic increases in tuition fees. This year, we'll be working with students across Canada to call for more affordable um, tuition. Uh, this will be held at the National Day of Action, November 2nd. Jenna Amaro, I'm not sure if she's here, but she's our VP external and she's our designated point person for the Day of Action. She's also a pretty rad organizer. The advocacy that we do goes beyond just grades. Uh, we're working to address graduate-specific issues in regards to mental health. One of our campaigns this year is to continue to fight for an embedded counselor, a counselor that's just for grad students. 
Uh, the, GSA also, the GSA also strives to address rape culture on campus. We are currently working to ensure that Carleton University develops a, social, a sexual violence policy that meets the needs of our members. We also have two sexual assault, sexual assault coordinators uh, that provide peer support, sexual education, and other programming centered on building consent culture. The second part of what we do is services. Uh, this includes things like your health and dental plan, uh, anyone who's paid tuition so far is automatically covered. Uh, all you need is C-A-R for Carlton and your student number, and that's how you can get your claim. We also have grants that students can apply for, and money is awesome. Why not top off the lovely funding packages that you got, right? This includes a travel grant, uh, travel for conferences, you know, those things that I, I heard grad students go to often, uh, emergency leave grants, student, uh, student organization grants, and family grants. Anyone with questions about the grants can definitely get in contact with Taylor Howarth, who's our VP Finance. The GSA also owns and operates Mike's Place Pub, which offers an excellent selection of beer and great food, including vegetarian options. Cool things about Mike's Place, number one, it's open to all students, but not all students know this. So I can almost guarantee you that you won't run into any of the students you TA for. <laughs> number two, Mike's Place is also the location of our trivia nights. They happen every Wednesday. The Harry Potter and Star Wars theme nights are super, super popular. You can just ask Eric Hitzman, who's our VP Operations. Uh, he used to host our trivia nights, but right now he's working hard on bringing in open mic nights. You can also find the cheapest printing on campus, which is really awesome, considering all the course packs or all the readings you're definitely gonna do. You also can find the Grad Lounge. Uh, the Grad Lounge is just another place that's quiet where you can come to study and eat. We have a fridge and a microwave, and some days we have free pizza. Our boardroom is available for students to book for meeting space or any other place for you to, you know, get away from your students that you're teaching, of course. There are many ways that you can get involved with the GSA. You can join our popular softball league that runs in the summer. I'd like to give a special shout out to Nipsia for having four teams. Uh, the GSA is also governed by a council with representatives from every department. You can run for council through your departmental association or by filling out a nomination form on the GSA website. We also have a graduate academic caucus that brings together graduate student representatives on departmental boards, a range of committees, including the International Student Committee and a political action committee. There's also a consent culture committee, one of my personal favorites, and a graduate residence caucus. Again, if you wanna get involved, check out our website or speak to one of your execs. Finally, the most important thing I wanna tell you about is the two weeks of Welcome Weeks programming hosted by the GSA. Uh, you've probably received a Welcome Week's calendar outside. All there you can find all the events centered around bus tours, information fairs, free lunches, and some parties. One of the parties that we're hosting on September 16th is alongside Ottawa U's Graduate Student Association. It's gonna be really fun. Maybe your last chance to party before classes start. Maybe, you never know. <laughs> uh, one of the, my favorite events is the workshop that we're having this Friday entitled How to Survive Grad School. I will be facilitating the workshop alongside our friends at Sam H, which is the Student Alliance for Mental Health. If you forgot any of the, the information I just presented to you, that's totally fine. All of the agendas that you got have everything that I mentioned so far. Um, you can also check in our, with our grad bulletin, the ease new letter that you signed up for. Every two weeks, you're gonna get updates about job opportunities, grants again, any other events that we're doing, even funding for your departmental associations, which is really, really good. And I just really like to thank the FGPA for inviting me on behalf of the GSA to speak in front of you all. And thank you so much for your time. I hope to see you at our Welcome Weeks events and hopefully at the barbecue later. Uh, you can keep in touch with us at uh, www.gsacarlton.ca or come visit us on the sixth floor of the University Center. We really like visitors and we really like friends too, so come visit. Thanks, Debbie and Matthias. Uh, my name is David Lafferty. Uh, I'm the, the coordinator of graduate professional development at Carleton. Um, and I work on projects uh, like grad orientation that are meant to enhance your experience while you're here. Uh, but I also work on projects uh, that can help you have a, a good experience after Carleton, after your uh, schoolwork is finally done. Um, I'm also a former grad student myself, so I know uh, many of the challenges that the grad students face. Um, one of those challenges, uh, particularly for PhD students, um, can be feelings of, of isolation. You come to campus uh, for a class or to meet with your supervisor and then you go home. Um, 
you can avoid isolation and enrich your student experience by establishing uh, a real connection with our uh, network of, of student services. And I want to assure you that all of the, or most of the student services that Carleton offers are open to grad students as well. They're certainly not just for undergrads. Um, just as an example of some of our services, student academic and career development services, which is a kind of umbrella organization that, that covers a, a lot. Um, we have library research and support, the Paul Menton Center for Students with Disabilities, Educational Development Center for uh, uh, Teaching and TA Training, uh, Equity Services, the International Student Services Office, uh, Health and, Health and Counseling and Athletics. Um, as you progress through your graduate program, it's very tempting, and I did this myself, uh, to, to focus only on, on your immediate future, uh, you know, the stuff you're working on right now, or this, the thesis chapter you're working on right now. Um, but no matter how far along you are or how busy you might be, uh, you need to take the time to look ahead at what awaits you after graduation. And if you can develop a clear vision of your long-term career path, um, I believe that you'll work with added focus and direction because you'll be investing in a, a future for yourself and, and for your ideas. Um, and to help you with this, to help you uh, plot your course, um, Carlton offers a, a range of uh, workshops, events, and resources that are all listed in the Grad Navigate section of our website. And all of you uh, probably received in your uh, bags uh, a little Grad Navigate card. Um, I encourage you to put that on your bulletin board or tape it to your binder, whatever you need to do, um, just to remind yourself that this should really be uh, your primary re resource for professional development. Um, on Grad Navigate, uh, you can see our schedule of, re of uh, workshops on uh, research and writing, professional skills development, career planning, and teaching skills. Um, you'll see in the uh, handout that you received a list of uh, upcoming workshops. And uh, I've got them right here as well. So we've got uh, workshops on uh, writing for scholarly journals, uh, publication is very important if you want to be competitive in the academic job market, and it's good to get a head start on that. Um, the imposter syndrome, which is a uh, common feeling among grad students that they're somehow faking their way through grad school. Um, I think many of us uh, who've been through grad school have experienced that. Uh, that's what that session will focus on. Other uh, problems like procrastination, Gray literature, that's the, the name they give to uh, uh, research resources that kind of fall outside traditional uh, channels. Um, and careers outside academia, um, that's becoming uh, very important as uh, the academic job market becomes uh, tighter and tighter. Um, what's more, if you're a, a TA, uh, all of the workshops uh, listed on Grad Navigate can count towards your pedagogical training hours. Um, but I would like to make it clear that all grad students are welcome. You do not have to be a TA uh, to come to these. Uh, finally, um, if you go to our website, you'll find a Grad Research Link, which is a, uh, a place where we post uh, announcements, uh, about research events that are going on in Carleton that are open to all grad students. And the idea here is to uh, facilitate a connection among grad students uh, and across uh, disciplines especially to kind of help people break out of their kind of research silos. Um, I will wrap up by saying that uh, it's, it's really never uh, too late or too soon uh, to think about your professional future after, uh, after you graduate. Um, as I mentioned, both the academic and non-academic job markets are very competitive, and the more knowledge that you can gather before you graduate, the better off you'll be. So whether you're planning on working inside or outside academia, I encourage you to go to Grad Navigate, um, and it can help you find your way. 
Um, all that being said, I know that you may have uh, concerns other than career development at the moment. Um, maybe you can go easy on yourself and start thinking about it after this weekend. Uh, in, in the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day and the first days of class. Thanks. Hello, everybody. My name's Lynn, and I am the Communications and Recruitment Officer for FGPA. Now, what does that mean? Who here received a copy of the Graduate at Carleton newsletter on September 1st? Okay, now everybody should be receiving that automatically if they are registered as a grad student at Carleton. So tomorrow morning, September the 7th, you will receive a fairly long newsletter and it's going to include some photos and images from orientation. So look closely because you might be in there somewhere. Our website is a good way of keeping in touch with you. And a couple of years ago, we had some focus groups with grad students like yourselves saying, we don't like what you've got. We want you to make that website more user friendly. So we listened and we completely redid the website. And in fact, about a week ago, we turned it into a responsive website. So it's now gonna work on all your mobile devices as well. You should, I hope, be able to find what you're looking for fairly quickly and easily. If you have any issues around the website, just write to me, contact me. We always want to get feedback from our grad students. Our website is changed or updated probably every day. So it is the most up-to-date information that you will get from us. But the newsletter, it goes out on the first and the third Wednesday of every month. It's called The Graduate at Carleton. And it's full of really, I hope, useful information. For one thing, it's got an important dates and deadlines section. And if you don't read anything else, please read that section. It has deadlines for awards, when you need to apply to graduate, when you need to get your thesis to your thesis advisor, et cetera, et cetera. You don't want to miss that information. It also contains a grad student research story every issue. And that's important because you can find out what your colleagues are doing from a research perspective by looking at the newsletter. If you're working on an interesting research project, contact me because we can either videotape you or we can write a story about you for the newsletter. And those stories go on departmental websites, they go on the university homepage, they get shared around and about, so they actually get quite a few reads. Uh, you could be famous. <laughs> um, we uh, talk about new initiatives. Uh, Matthias mentioned our uh, satisfaction survey, and we're very pleased with the results. We've been working on this for a long, long time to give you an even better experience than you had before. So we'll have a story in the newsletter about that. Um, awards, we try to keep you as up to date as possible. For example, the Ontario Graduate Scholarship, the OGS. That application form is online now. The newsletter promotes it. It gives you all kinds of tips uh, and it pushes you to the website where there's a lot more information. Um, scholarship refunds. If, for example, you are eligible for that, the whole process has been changed this year. There's information in the newsletter about that. So you can see why it's important to read the newsletter. Matthias mentioned Twitter. How many of you have your own Twitter account? Most of you. Well, we of course have one at Grad Studies and you are more than welcome to uh, follow us on Twitter. And if you're doing anything to do with orientations, it's hashtag see you new grads. Uh, take a picture of each other, whatever you want, it's always kind of fun. Um, we have a YouTube channel, Grads at Carleton. We've had about 90,000 reads of, of, of views on that as well. In those videos, you will see people like yourselves talking about their research. Uh, we promote the three minute thesis people. And that's, it's, we call it the 3MT. And you may not be ready this year, but by next year, if you're working on a thesis or a research paper, it's a really fun competition, I promise you. People that have been through the whole thing, we offer you training. They say it's one of the best experiences they've ever had. And it will teach you how to talk about your research to a general audience. 
And that's important because when you graduate and you're going for a job interview and the person says, so uh, tell me about your research. You don't want to come off and say, well, it was the uh, induction of phernitrothion on <laughs> tobacco, blah, 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 because they're going to look at you as if you're nuts. They won't understand. But if you can talk about it in an engaging way uh, to a general audience, your chances go up in terms of getting that job. What else do we talk about? Um, we do talk about grad student services uh, online and in the newsletter. And uh, for example, in the upcoming newsletter, there's a story about li the library and all the services that it offers. I believe there is still grad student space that you can book on the fifth floor. It's very limited this year due to the construction. So first come, first served. Um, important tips about succeeding as a grad student at Carleton. And we invite you to uh, write a student blog for us on topics of interest to other grad students. We're always happy to promote that in the newsletter. So just in summary, let me know your story. Um, let me know what you're working on in terms of research that you think might be of interest to other students. I'm always looking for good stories to write about. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Carol Payne, and as Matthias said, I'm an associate professor of art history. It was very good to hear a mathematician invoke art. We'll get you to join our faculty. Um, and I'm delighted today to have an opportunity to give you some advice from a faculty perspective. Most of us on faculty really look at you with a little bit of envy, I think. Uh, grad studies can be a really wonderful moment in your lives, and I'm sure it will be for all of you. So we kind of wish we were you today. Um, on the other hand, I know that sitting there, you're probably entering grad school and, and sitting through orientation with a mixture of excitement and a little bit of trepidation. And I hope my brief comments today, I can share your excitement, but quell some of that, those nerves as well. So David asked me to speak about, uh, to give some advice again this year uh, from a faculty perspective for grad students. And like any academic researcher, my first stop was to do some research. And I did that by speaking to former and current grad students, as well as some of my colleagues. And the advice that I've compiled is really very brief, just three key points, because I know you've got a lot to think about uh, this week. Um, and uh, is this? <laughs> uh, so three key points. Um, and um, I think if you keep these in mind, it will enrich your experience as grad students. So those points are really connections, growth, and balance. Very simply, connect, grow, balance. And I'm going to start with connections, because in many ways, I think that's the most important of the three. The connections you make over the next few months and years will be among the most important in your life. And I think that's why many of us in faculty look back very, very fondly on grad school years. Um, indeed, some people argue that the connections made with others during academic experiences are among the students' most important. Connections are both important to academic accomplishment and success, as well as your personal experience. So as a new grad student, you're going to have stacks and stacks of articles to read, case studies to peruse, TA responsibilities. You're going to be incredibly busy. The instinct for many of you will be to hole up alone, working in, in isolation to complete your work. But I want to encourage you to also take advantage of the opportunities to learn from and work with others. That's going to enhance your experiences here and enhance, I think, your work as a scholar as well. So what kind of connections should you make? I encourage you to connect with faculty. Get to know the professors in your department and others and your research advisors. Talk to them about your own research uh, interests and listen to their own interests. Find out through them what's new in your field. In short, open up a dialogue with faculty. You should also connect with Carleton and with the larger community. You heard from Debbie many of the things going on through GSA, which really runs a fabulous program, as does FGPA. 
So attend special lectures and other events at Carleton and beyond. The campus is consistently a lively place for visiting scholars, special events, and social events as well. And often, strangely enough, it's those serendipitous moments when you're having conversations that seem unrelated to your research that ideas develop. Much scholarship is working toward community engagement. So start engaging with your community now. Um, join the GSA, get involved with things going on in campus, be a part of the community in a meaningful way. Finally, I make a point to connect with your classmates. The people in your cohort are going to become your friends and colleagues for years to come. Get involved in the life of your department um, and get involved with uh, other events going on with your colleagues. Working together will enrich your understanding of academic work and it will also create a community for you. I'm going to quote one of our recent grads of the RMA program, uh, Krista Brox, who said uh, for her, she wanted to advise all of you to work together with classmates and other colleagues, especially when it comes time to write and edit papers. It's a great way to bond and build self-confidence in one's own work. The sooner you become more comfortable or familiar with the network of people around you, the easier it will become to muddle through the challenges of being a grad student. So work together. So that's connections. Secondly, I want you to think about growth. Um, graduate study is, or can be, a fantastic opportunity for intellectual and personal growth. So I encourage you to challenge yourself, especially intellectually. If you're an MA student just starting your MA, remember you're not an undergrad anymore. We know undergrads, if you've been a TA, you know them. Sometimes they pick courses and projects strategically to try to get the most out of a minimum effort. Don't do that anymore. Dig a little deeper, make more of a commitment, take things on because you're motivated about them, not because of the grades. Now, if you're a doctoral student, recognize that now you are an emerging scholar. Take yourself seriously in that way. Challenge yourself by going further with your research. And if you haven't already started speaking at conferences, this is the moment to start doing that. Make sure you're out there giving papers at grad student conferences or at professional conferences. Get your work out there and known. Make those network connections there, too. Next, in terms of growth, I want to encourage you not to arrive here with any idée fix. Try on new ideas and new methodologies. Maybe you're going to return to the same models you arrived with, but they will be enriched by having experimented with new ways of working and new ideas. Um, and then I also want you to encourage you to give and receive feedback constructively. That's always a part of academic work. It's part of academic work none of us like. Uh, but it does make your writing, your thinking, your projects better if you're getting feedback and giving feedback. And here I want to uh, quote another grad student, E. Jung McGillis, who's in the PhD program in cultural mediations. She said of her MA program, quote, what I most appreciated and have benefited from, definitely, is my colleagues' candid review on my work during uh, my academic time. We were all able to establish trust and care for each other. Such relationship has nurtured me to grow intellectually as well as to broaden my academic horizon unprecedentedly. Um, and finally, in addition to connections and growth, I want you to think about balance. I would imagine this week you're going to hear a lot about life-work balance, and I'm going to reiterate some of that and then extend it to uh, academic work uh, as a whole. So work-life balance. Um, you really do need to make time for social life, for exercise, and sleep. Does anyone remember what sleep was? So it is possible to get an advanced degree and get good night's sleep. I swear. I know you don't believe me, but it's possible. Um, and in fact, that article you could take two hours to read when you're alert will take you four when you're exhausted. So make sure you're taking care of yourself. 
uh, in terms of rest, exercise, and, and having a meaningful social life. But balance also relates to your academic work. Um, anyone who studied academic writing knows that people who do binge writing sessions, I'm going to write for 10 hours today, and I won't have time to write again for a week, this does not work out. It's really better to be disciplined, to have a certain amount of writing every day. That will get you through the thesis or the dissertation. Um, if you write just for a short period of time, often in the morning, does anyone remember the morning? Anyway, um, some of you might. Um, for those in coursework, you can apply some of that rule for writing a thesis or dissertation by being disciplined about your work, working every day, even in small increments, and then you feel like you're on top of it instead of having to cram at any point. So in other words, academic work, in academic work, balance basically means discipline. You have to establish a routine of daily work with breaks for yourself. Okay? Those are my very simple three key points, my little recipe for grad school. Um, as I said, this is a rewarding period. I think all of the faculty members are probably jealous of you. You'll probably see some of my colleagues in the lineup to get sausages this afternoon pretending they're grad students. Um, but if you keep in mind connections, growth, and balance, uh, I think you'll have an enriched experience. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, everybody. And I think since our speakers did a terrific job, I think they deserve one more round of applause. <laughs>So just to reiterate very briefly what, what was a common theme and what many of them said, uh, it speaks to what uh, Carol just said, uh, David mentioned it, all the activities that the GSA organizes contribute to this and uh, all the communications activities that Linda as well speaks to it is connections with other people and making sure that grad studies is not an isolating experience between you and the problem or the thesis, the problem you're trying to solve or the thesis you're trying to write. As I said at the beginning, there is your supervisor, they are all your fellow students, and as uh, Debbie mentioned, we are about 3,900 students now at, uh, at Carlton. So make it an experience where you're not alone, where you speak to people. You can talk to them about your research or anything but your research. Don't do what I did and just talk about math with your cat. Um, <laughs> even if you do that, you can still turn out all right. But it, it may be more fun for grad studies than what I did back in Germany. I'd like to add with Shirk that they run something called the Storyteller Competition. Uh, it's once a year. It's usually in the new year in early spring. And the prize money is good. It's 3000 bucks, And they allow you to submit in a number of different formats. So you choose what you like best. It could be an infographic. It could be a video, etc. But it's all about your research or your professor's research that you're talking about. And again, we offer training for that. And we've had successful students, Johnny L. Alam. Yes. Uh, so we, we've had winners others. every year. And um, what they do is they give out 25 awards, but then they choose out of that five top winners. And they're given a lot of publicity. So it's really good for them in terms of self-promotion. So but this we've is one had of a couple of winners in the top five. This is one of these other grants or awards that I spoke about. And as Debbie says, uh, how did you put it? Money is awesome. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> since we provide a lot of funding at the graduate level, I, I hope you appreciate it. So GSA, uh, Debbie, um, there. Someone mentioned to me once that there was a uh, graduate parents association or something along that line. Um, does that run out of the GSA office or out of another office? Yeah. Oh, hello. Yeah, so you can find that at the GSA office. Uh, this year in, like, the memory that I have, this is the first year that one of our campaigns is focusing on student parents. Uh, I know that we have an event coming up October 7th, which is our kids and coffee event, where uh, students who have children can bring their kids in for some coffee, some tea, or cho hot chocolate for the little ones, um, and have some you know, just some time to talk with other grad students who are parents about issues. Um, October 7th is also a PA day, so that's why we thought it'd be great to bring the little ones. Um, 
one of the things that we are working on is to like maximize um, some grants for student parents. Um, nothing's finalized, but you can look out for that, but definitely at the GSA. Thank you. And any words of advice or slash any resources available for such situations? I can speak to that. Uh, I did work in the workforce for many years and then went back to do my master's degree. Unfortunately not here, I did it at UBC. You don't Sorry need to, to that. say that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was quite the transition. Uh, for one thing, I remember it like Saturday night at like one o'clock in the morning, trying to work on my thesis, my computer froze. I thought, what am I doing? Whereas when you're working, you know, you, you don't always take your work home with you. You do sometimes. So you're kind of, you're taking a look at work-life balance a lot. I found making friends was really important. In fact, we set up a support group every Friday afternoon. We did art therapy together. And out of that, I still have fantastic friends. So I think what Carol said about connections is really important. But that meant, to a certain extent, leaving some of my work cohorts behind because I was in a very different place. You, you know, I had a similar experience of having worked for a few years before uh, going to grad school. And, uh, you know, there was a bit of adjustment at first. The paychecks weren't coming in. Um, but, but it really wasn't that hard. And I, I, like Lynn, I sought out friends and I found there were people who had an experience like me. They hadn't conventionally gone through. I think one thing you don't want to forget is that that gives you a real bonus, in fact, right? You, you have wealth to draw on from that experience. Carleton has a long history of having lots of students who come back to school, too. So you're not alone. There are a lot of people. And um, I don't know if GSA or FGPA does stuff. Yeah, I was going to echo a few of the things that you mentioned before about connections. Um, in terms of like our exec, actually one of our exec members is a former politician. She ran for office. And so you're, we have a great range of folks who are coming either directly from an undergrad like myself, uh, folks who've been here for a long time, or folks who took a little break to be a politician and came back. So if you ever want to chat with anyone, you can come speak to the execs. Uh, in terms of like services, I think the How to Survive Grad School workshop on Friday would be a good one. Because uh, you can get some ideas on like, how to get over the slump of like not writing papers for a long time and not reading for a long time. Uh, so I think that's a good resource to come out and that's at 2.30 on Friday. I would say from the FGPA, maybe uh, David wants to talk about this, from the FGPA viewpoint, there are certain services that, that certainly speak to, the, uh, to this transition. I think I've never really worked outside of academia, so I can't speak about my own experience in that regard, but what I could easily imagine is that the, uh, the freedom that you have as a graduate student is actually much higher than what you would have with respect to your schedule, just your time organization, than what you have in a workplace. So that's where procrastination, which is one of the things David <laughs> mentioned, actually easily can set in because there is no firm deadline maybe. You just have at the horizon at some point that you know point where you have to turn in your thesis, but whether you work on it very hard this week or take a break and do it more next week, it's a much, much slower process, right? And it's something that, that is needed because you need the reflection to work on it. That also means that you have to set your own pace a little bit and do that, of course, with your supervisor, but don't let it slip, right? Because that freedom easily can turn into procrastination more than if you have a very regular, you know, an organized uh, workplace scheme. So maybe David can talk to this as well. well. I, I, I'll just say, um, and then I, I think we'll, uh, we'll have to wrap up, but, uh, I think you should, uh, if you've been working for a little while and you're coming uh, back to school to do a graduate degree, think of your work experience definitely not as a, a disadvantage, it's a real advantage. I mean, this is something um, that people, you know, like myself, who spent a lot of time in grad school, uh, lose touch with, the, the, the kind of routines and of the working world. Um, and a lot of the uh, workshops that we offer when it comes to career development are about trying to get grad students to uh, think in those terms. Um, so if you can carry a bit of uh, that experience into your grad studies, I think it could actually really help you a lot. Um, I know that uh, a lot of people have success when they treat their grad program like a job. 
you know, they come in at uh, 9 o'clock and they leave and they go home at 5 o'clock. Um, and you have to kind of force yourself to do the work. Um, if you can uh, make a routine out of it, treat it like a job, uh, you won't have those, uh, I don't think anyway, you'll have those, you know, long periods of inactivity that uh, can trap some people. Um, and I think Carol had uh, talked to that as well. Um, it's, it's really about what you do um, on an everyday routine kind of basis that's going to uh, determine whether you uh, succeed or not. And uh, if, you're, if you're putting in that, uh, that effort every day and taking time, uh, you know, if, if you're treating it like a job, it means you can go home and relax afterwards, have a good sleep, uh, you know, spend some time uh, having fun on the weekends. Uh, rather than, I know especially people who are doing PhDs, um, it can your work can sometimes become your life and uh, if you can achieve some kind of separation there I think you're going to be ahead. This is a very good point that uh, to this view that actually if you come from the from a workplace you uh, you have a great advantage right uh, when you work at the graduate level and and I remember when the day when I handed in my PhD thesis and I would probably not have done it if a good friend of mine wouldn't have insisted I should and I said, but I'm not done, I can do better. And he said, yes, but he wrote, he said that sentence that really st stuck with me. And he said, research is never finished. It can only be interrupted. And that's something that really stuck with me. So if you have that feeling that you're not done yet, very different probably from a workplace where you have a clear deadline and it's over and it's done and it's finished and it looks ready and that's it. You never have that feeling in research and that's normal. It's natural. Okay, but you have to make that call when to interrupt it together with your supervisor. That's a very important difference between both worlds that you're probably well prepared if you come from that place. So now, unfortunately, I enjoyed the discussion a lot, but I think uh, time is running out on us. I will all see you at the barbecue for sure. And um, that starts at 2.30, I repeat it, but we are, oops, we are asking the, uh, the new TAs to come back here at 2.15, please. So thank you very much to everybody and welcome to Carlton.